Hi, it's Jacqueline from Project Most. Today we're going to be working on patterns. One of the nice things about the warmer weather is that there are a lot of things outside growing that we wouldn't be able to find during the cooler months. So we're going to be using objects that you found in your yard. So spend about 10 or 15 minutes or however long it takes finding some things in your yard that you'd like to make patterns with. Patterns are something we've been doing since, you know, we started school or even before that. And um, you can make patterns with beads, you can make patterns with colors, you can make patterns with blocks, and as you get older they tend to get a little more complicated. But patterning is the basic foundation for coding. So when kids start learning coding in the very beginning, they start with patterns, like an A, B, A, B pattern. We're not going to get super scientific when we make our work today, but just keep in the back of your mind that this is the precursor to coding if you wanted to move into that. For patterning, I looked around my yard and I found some things that I could have several of. So I found little white clover flowers, the smallest acorns, and the green leaves from the clovers, which have a really nice white um, semicircle pattern, and this lichen that apparently comes off the trees and is floating around my yard. I've seen it growing on the trees, but I guess a lot of it is now in the grass. So I chose those four things for patterning. Everything else I've, I've chosen to use for today's project has been um, reused and sort of reduce, reuse, recycle theme going on here. So this is some cardboard that came in a package of something I bought and I saved it because it's a nice rectangular piece, nice and clean. I also have a popsicle stick, which used to have an ice pop on it. I have a white envelope to put my um, gluey popsicle stick down in between gluing. And the only two things that I'm not reusing, I'm using for the first time, is a paper muffin um, liner, a muffin liner, and it's in my bowl so I don't get glue all over my bowl, but I could put the glue directly in the bowl and then just wipe glue. So you can use whatever kind of cardboard you have. I like to use cardboard for gluing things down, especially when I might need a lot of glue, like for these flowers, because it withstands the glue a little bit better than paper will. And if we start with an AB pattern, I think, hmm, which of these objects do I want to work with? So I'm going to start with my green clovers, the leaves. I'm just gonna put several dots down. Now, I didn't realize when I first started planning this project, I didn't realize that it was going to be about coding. I thought we can make some art using things that we have outside. So I put four dots and I'm going to do A, is my green clover leaf. B will be my little mini acorns. And then A is my clover leaf. And I'm laying my clover leaf the same way each time. So stem side down. I'm laying my acorns stem side down also. So A, B, A, go all the way across but I like lines and I like linear things so even though this started out sounding scientific when I use the word coding I think it's going to be a really nice piece of art based on nature or things I found in nature that I'm going to put in my front window so I can see it when I walk up to the front door in fact ah, I wanted to tell you while I was crouched in my front yard plucking these leaves off the clover plants and looking around for the little tiny acorns in my garden, I realized that the birdhouse that I put right next to my front door has a tenant in it. I've had that birdhouse so long and no birds have ever moved into it. But while I was gathering these supplies, I was sitting outside, quiet, very quiet, 
and not moving much since I was picking leaves off plants. And I guess the birds felt safe to come out. And I heard this tick, tick, tick sound and I looked around and then I heard it again and I realized it was coming from the, the birdhouse, which is ceramic. And it's like a, like a teardrop shaped ceramic white um, birdhouse with a little tiny hole in it and then sure enough the stick that was sticking out moved and then this little gray bird popped his head out and then he went back in and the stick moved some more and then the bird popped out could have been the female bird I'm not sure if it was the male or female I don't even know what kind of bird it is um, it popped back out again and then it flew off into the bush so I did a little bit of research. I still don't know what kind of bird it is. It might be a cat bird. Um, I need to observe it more and get a better idea of what it looks like. But I know it's gray and small and super loud because I've been hearing noises by my front door that sounded like birds over the last couple days. And I thought that they were in the bushes, but it turns out they were moving into my birdhouse, which is really exciting to me. I get to carefully watch and listen every day and then maybe I'll be able to hear the baby birds making sounds when they hatch. So, so far I made my AB pattern with the leaves and the acorns. Now for the second row I think I'm going to do an ABB pattern. I feel like that's a natural progression. So I will do A. Oh, I don't have enough room with the lichen and these clover flowers. I guess I'll have to use the smaller things again. So I made my, I pre applied the glue dots, and I guess they're a little too close. So A, B is my clover, B is my clover. A is my green leaf. And then B is my white clover. They smell sweet. B is my white clover. When I was little, we used to pull each individual uh, flower piece out of these clovers and suck out the honey. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that anymore, but uh, I know that there are no pesticides in my yard because we don't apply pesticides. Um, so I think that we're safe. All right, so that's my ABB pattern and I ended on the first B. I can't squeeze in the second B because I ran out of space. So it's looking like nice rows. I am going to take into consideration that when I use this lichen, it's going to take up a lot of space, so I'm not going to pre-apply my glue for these. So I think I'm going to go back to, uh, let me do A, A, B this time. So I did A, B, A, B, A, B, and then I did A, B, B, A, B, B. Now I'm going to do A, A. B, knowing that the B's are these really large pieces, so I need to leave some extra space. You don't have to pre-apply the glue like this, but I like to because it saves me from having to go back and forth. All right, so take these little green leaves again. A, A, and here comes the B. I hope that sticks. I might need to add more glue. A. A. Get glue on my fingers. B. Bees. So the clover leaves look almost exactly the same, although some of them are big and some are small but these pieces of pale green lichen that I picked off the ground that fell off the trees, they are definitely very irregularly shaped. 
they are not all the same. In fact, none of them are the same just because of the nature of the plant. All right, but it certainly makes for interesting texture. That's why I was excited when I saw them. This one needs more glue. So A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B. We are ready for our final row. And I definitely have a lot of this lichen that I'd like to use. So I think I'm going to do lots of texture on the bottom. I'm going to go back to, or I'm going to stick with an AAB pattern, but I'm going to do two of these lichens and then one little acorn. It started out fairly flat and then the yellow, uh, the white clovers got a little more three-dimensional and this final row is really sticking up off the page. And the nice thing about the white glue is that it dries pretty quickly so by tomorrow or maybe even later today I can stand it up on my windowsill or tape it to my window depending on how it fits. And then I can actually compost this if it starts, if I put it outside and it starts getting all decomposed from the, the elements, like if it rains, if it gets wet and the cardboard gets soggy. I can, um, although I don't know about the white glue. I don't know if that, yeah, that would probably contaminate my compost pile. I'm not going to compost it. It was a thought, but I'm not going to. All right, I have enough space for two more lichens, except I just chose a really large piece. Let's see. I'm letting, instead of picking it specifically, I'm letting my fingers do the choosing and just plucking whatever piece comes up next. All right, there we go. So art from nature, patterning, precursor to coding, and just really pleasing. So have fun with it.